Right there. Ooh, we are live. Oops. Hi. I said go. <laughs> she was just moving the camera. But we're live now, so that's awesome. Okay. Um, today we're going to do some little origami, fabric origami. So you'll notice there's no sewing machine. This is, this is a no-sew project. No Ooh. sewing. No sewing required whatsoever. And, um, oh, there we go. Hey, Christy. So this works well with scraps. Jen, as you see, has pieces of fabric um, to make this size. It's about three inches. It's, yeah, three Ish. and a half inches. Um, she did, hey, Chris, use some binding scraps the other day, so two and a half inch strips, and it came out this size. And so if you're like me, and you have binding so you can scraps coming out your ears, uh, you can make these with those too. Right? And it's already half done because you've already have pressed it's half it. pressed it. So anyway, fun project. I have never made them. Should I make her make one? I have one that Jen's made me. I should make her make one. But I've never made one, so I'm learning today with you. I'm gonna grab you a pressing mat. Hey look, I have a pressing mat. I'm gonna make this make one. It's gonna be awesome. Yay. That way I actually, you know, so I'll know if I'm effective at teaching. Which colorway <laughs> do you want? Um, the 12 days one. 12 days. Okay. That's good because they're all different colors. So this is from our 12 days of Christmas fabric line. This is my finished example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it out of the blues because they're pretty. Um, what you're going to need to do this is you're going to need four three and a quarter by 12 inch strips. So these are three and a quarter by 12 inches. Did you cut this one shorter? That one I did. So if you're going to do a narrower strip, you're naturally going to need less. So this one is more like two and a half by 10 inch. So if you ever wanted to use up a layer cake or a jelly roll or, or extra binding. leftover binding like this one right here, you just need a smaller strip. But really, they could be bigger or smaller depending on what your strip is. So the first thing you're going to do is... Morning. Fold your strips in half lengthwise that I can do. and give it a press. This is not an iron that I know. Ooh, it's got something on the bottom. You're burning your mat, that's why. It's too Turn hot. It down. Do, 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 do. I don't know this iron. Yeah, it's too hot. Okay, you need I'll. to pull off. Colder. This one says like hotter holder yeah anyway so you're gonna fold your strips in half and then you're gonna fold them in half again hey. pressing toward the center here so it's like making a double fold bias tape which is why you have to remind me keep it still that way we can there you go so it does take a minute or two to press these. That's a heavy iron. I'm not used to that one. Stick. Yeah, it's still hot. Maybe I should grab a different one. Yeah, why don't you do that? I'm going to do that. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties early in the morning. Look all good. Um, hey, I know this guy. Sweet. Perfect. Okay, so I... When I make binding, sometimes I make it this way when I like it extra fat. I get that question all the time on shop samples because some of our bindings are really are fat the and fold. they're from the double fold bias. So, and if you've been making face masks, you have made binding like this probably. So, it's just you make your French binding, open it up, and fold it in half all over again. Great. Not too tricky. Um, there are making a bias tape there are bias tape makers out there but they will not make three and a quarter so no i don't have anything that'll make one this size you're on your own so but it's really not hard you have to make your own you have your seam you open it up press it in right and i don't go all the way to the fold i just stay that little scant right little edge from the fold press in okay and, and then these once little I stars roy are christmas ornaments so we yeah, will put a so little I'll put Christmas, a, little... a string in it or a little hook, and then you have a <coughs> fabric Christmas ornament. I brought some embroidery thread, because I just put a little loop through. 
um, of embroidery thread and tie a cute little knot at the top and then call it good. Now, if you're cotton, it doesn't hurt to use best press because you do want it to be pretty well pressed, pretty flat. The flatter it is, the easier it's going to be to to weave with. We always have vintage irons available pretty much, Margaret. So uh, the one we, we just switched over to is a Durabilt Travel Iron. It's kind of our favorite. Yep. Uh, the big one we were using is an American Beauty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot heavier, which is awesome in a lot of ways. Um, so. I have a I have a vintage, it's not an American Beauty, it's a GE um, full-sized iron in my sewing room. And that is what I use pretty much exclusively. <clears throat> um, so we <clears throat> get behind her. We do like our super hot. They're hot. They're heavy. Irons. Um, they're flat. They don't. They don't, don't, they don't, they don't have. Uh, they don't steam. So you don't have the steam holes, which also means you don't get the dripping or the rust or um, any of that fun stuff. Because what I personally, when I need. Um, a little bit of steam. I have one of these Mr. Bottles with water, water in it. So I have I have one with best press and one with water. And mm -hmm. that way I can, yeah, I can kind of control my steam a little more. I mean, this one's on our website. It's called the Durabilt Travel Iron. Yep. They're vintage. Um, but they are handy dandy little things. The handle collapses down and yeah, so you can flip this open and flat and fold it down. I have one sitting next to my sewing machine. And now when I pull out my big oh. iron for stuff, I'm always like, this thing is massive. Okay. Oh, you guys, our, um, our wool pressing mats are back in stock. Oh yeah. The ones we source them ourselves. So they're less expensive because so, we're yeah. not paying the third Since layer. We don't of... have to pay the wholesaler for them. Um, we buy them straight we from the manufacturer. We get them straight from the manufacturer. I mean, which means we buy several cases at a time. But it means they're always 25% off their normal retail price. So if you don't have a wool pressing mat, we got ours back in stock. We which got, means they're always discounted. And they're bigger than this. They are. The ones we got. We've got some this size and some bigger. Um, so you're going to see that, I mean, obviously right now, I, I love them. I, I kind of get a giggle every time I see on Facebook, somebody will post like, so I'm thinking about a wool pressing mat. Are they really that good? And like in five minutes, there's a hundred comments. Oh my goodness, you're going to love it. You need one. They're the best. You, to, you know, yeah, it's, it's just funny to me. Good morning. So we're just folding our strips. Yep. So we're going to fold our strips to do our origami stars. They're, they're called a Scandinavian folded star. So I should probably not call them origami. But, um, feels like origami. Feels like origami. These are a no sew project. So you'll notice no sewing machine. Um, you don't even really need the needle and thread. I, I mean, I'll use one at the end to put a loop through the ornament. Liz has never made these, so. No, I'm learning. So I'm going to teach her. You look awesome. And we'll, that way I'll know if I'm being effective in my teaching. If Liz can make it. <laughs> if I'm smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> about that you're welcome anytime that's what i'm here for actually i really like mm -hmm. that 12 day of christmas fabric pool because it'll be a really good way to be able to refer to one color at a time there are four very rather than colors. like with this figgy one i love christmas figs um where there's two reds and two greens um or this one written instructions uh, i will put out some written instructions with some pictures so give me a a little Hot bit. Minute. <laughs> but I would be happy to write some written instructions for it. The really a photo step by step would be, I think, more helpful. Um, the one thing you might want to write down from now is that the size I'm using is three and a quarter inches wide and 12 inches long. And you need four of those. Oh, you just answered the next question. Oh, good. good. I'm, I'm three and a quarter by 12. Three and a quarter by 12. That's kind of the standard size. Like I said, I did another one out of two and a half inch strips. Um, so your leftover jello so pieces are binding. You can totally make them smaller and you cut those about 10 inches long. Yeah. Well, initially what I did is I cut them to 12 because I wanted to see 
how much I cut off. That way I wasn't like really guessing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I knew I'd have plenty with the 12. But I cut over an inch off of each, so. That was a good, a good guess. All right, so we're pressed. Liz is doing her final best press. And actually, we're done with the iron for now. Hold on. I'm gonna do the other side. Okay. I'm gonna grab the other little pressing mat. You guys, I'm like swimming in pressing mats. But that way the iron's off of our table so people can see what we're doing. Now, here's a fun little fact when it comes to pressing. You actually need to press. Put the if you want something to be flat, whether you're piecing or, or in this case where we're folding strips, you need to actually press. Push down. And this is why I like my heavy iron at home because it, it does that, that it helps pressing that. for me. Um, a lot of people will just gently rub it over the top, and while that does apply the heat, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily flatten. Yeah. Okay. So let's do some origami. So pick the one you want to start with. Green. Awesome. What you're gonna do? I like to put my open fold part on the inside because I'm. I don't know. I don't know. Particular. It's better than anal. Okay, so you're going to fold it almost in half. You're going to leave like an inch-ish coming off the bottom. And just lay it horizontally. Oh, that way. On your table. Okay. So, wait. so go this and then fold over. But you want this pressing toward the center. So I'm having the fold part down. Okay. Well, the fold part. There are two fold parts. The side with two parts. folds or the side with one fold? The part. She wants the side with two folds. I want the open side on the, in the inside. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Fold a piece in half, leaving about an inch coming off the bottom. And this one's going to go here. But what I'm going to do is basically go under my initial piece and over it. Okay, so that's the open so fold side. Yep. No, no, no. All the way under. Oh, all the way all under. All the way under. All the way under and then fold it. No. Fold it all the way over. All the way over. See? She's going to make her teach it. The you rules. are going to make me. She's going to ask all your questions. Or okay. About being by like an inch and a half. Yeah. Just leave that open right there. Sweet is here. Hey, sweetie. Okay. So same thing again. You're going to kind of fold that in half-ish, leaving that inch. Ooh. Okay, but we're going to slide all the way under piece number two. So all the way under your cream piece there, Liz. And then flip it over. All the way under. Again. All the way under. Can we zoom into your folding? Yeah, let's do that. It's really going to help with the camera situation. Give me a second here. All right. All right. So my open side is right here. Yep. Right so here. So I just keep my open sides basically toward and the center. Down here. Just because I think it, it comes out with a neater finished product. So, so that I don't have my open seam right here. This one's going all the way around here. And this one's going all the way around. Right. So they're going all the way there. around on the outside. They're catching them. Okay. okay. So for your final one, this is the trickier one. You're going to go all the way under and over your third piece here. So just fold it in half and, and go all the way under and over that one. Okay, but now you're gonna put it through this little overhang you've got left over there on your green. The, the long tail or both tails? Both of them. Got it. So if I slide it over She's going to love watching you try and do this. It's great. Liz is asking all the questions for those at home. All right, and then you're just going to kind of pull it snug. I'll pull, like, the two vertical and then the two horizontal back and forth a little bit. You don't want to pull it, like, crazy tight, but it's nice, and, nice and snug and square. Okay. 
All right, this is our next job. So now we have this, this guy right here. Okay. Flip it over. Just flip it over. Okay, now what you're gonna do is take your piece at the top, because we always work in a clockwise fashion here. Doesn't matter which one's at the top. Fold it down all the way. Okay, grab your piece on the right, fold it over all the way. Oh, I lied, I lied, I lied, sorry. Okay, you're only taking the top piece I was like, really? and folding it down. Okay. Okay. Then you can take the right top piece, fold it, fold it over, <clears throat> the bottom top piece, fold it up. And this one, again, you're going to pull it all the way over, but you're going to slide it through. Yep. Slide it through your little white strip. And again, gently Tug. tight, tighten it up. And like, I pulled that too tight, so then I just used my fingers to loosen it. Now this is pretty well... Secure. Locked in. This is the center of our star. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fun? All right, which one do you want to start with? Good. Now we're going to do the tips. Now with the tips, I do like to use some Wonder Clips. Really, you only need one. What you're going to do is you're going to take your little piece here. You're going to fold it back behind itself like this so that it's... I went backwards and folded this way. And then you're gonna fold it down. So I've got this little like flying goose point here. And then I'm gonna flip it back over on top of itself so that I have a point. Okay. And then I like to put a, a clip there just to hold it while I do some, some tucking, tucking. So then I've got this oh, little look. hole right here. This little tail, you just tuck it back in? Yeah, now if your tail's too long, so that's longer than we want, just trim it off. Trim it to where though? Like here. And we're going to turn toward the camera list. We're going to trim it to like here. You don't want it to be longer than like this section right here. So trim it like that ish. And then I tuck it down. And then you're going to tuck it down in. Now you can use a little stiletto. You can use your seam ripper. So I'm tucking it into here. Yep. Right in there. Got it. Um, you can also, if you want something a little smoother, I really do like the point-to-point -point turner because the seam ripper and stiletto can get a little stabby. <laughs> well, you just end up poking through the fabric over and over again. You just gotta be able to do it straight. Right, and that's why I like to use the, the Wonder Clip because that holds my point in place so then I'm a little more Ooh. comfortable tucking things in. We can't see Hold it there. down. Oh, sorry, right there. Look, I did it. <clears throat> you did it. We're going to do it again. So I'll take my clip off. Now again, we're going to flip it back behind. This is, we're working. No, other direction. No, you this still way. want the blue one. Ah! Okay, put it up top. It's easier to oh. work that way. You go behind. And then down. And then down. And then over the top. And then over the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip my nice little point. Now on mine, my tail here is too long because what I'm going to fold it under, you guys, is this strip. Well, this strip only goes halfway. So if I left my long tail, all of this is going to show through. And we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that off. And then I'm gently going to work it under there. Now the beauty of these short strips, you'll see, see look, I can pull this guy back and just tuck oh, it in like that yay. and then pull it tight again. That's handy. You can only do that a few times. But, Half of them. But when but you can, that's handy. It, it does make life a little easier, doesn't it? So I'm going to do this one back yep. behind. Back behind. And then down. Down. And over. Ooh. Clip. And then this isn't one of the shortcut ones. You gotta no. just, you gotta just tuck. But I gotta cut it shorter. Yep. Right? Yep. That's, my phone's telling me I'm supposed to be at work. Oh. Way to go being ahead of your phone. Yeah, well, I haven't updated it. <laughs> oh. My schedule on it since we started doing lives. <laughs> yep. So this, you're just gonna keep going around and around. Like, that's... 
Why does it feel kind of loose? It'll be fine. No, it's fine. Okay. She says it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Ooh, this is a shortcut one. This is a shortcut one. Okay, the Wonder Clip's helpful. The Wonder Clip is helpful, right? You can do it without. The one I did at the shop last night while I was long arming, I did without. That, that would be this one. But I don't feel like my points are as good. Because it's nice to kind of get that point in place and then like hold on to it. That one and I didn't. So okay. do you like my scissors? I yeah. suppose I should put them in the center for us both to use. I just need to cut like an eighth of an inch off of that strip. Right. Cool. Now I can tighten it up. Yep. <clears throat> now really okay. these will hold up without any kind of locking it into place. Now, that being said, if you're making these for uh, small children, grandchildren, I mean, they're a great gift. I, um, if Stacy were here, she could tell me how many years we've been doing this. But with a group of friends, I do an ornament exchange every year. And some people buy them, some people make them, but we just swap ornaments with friends. Really, it's a good excuse to get together. Um, and one year I made these for it and I mean I thought they were well received I still have one from it yeah you came to that one yep that's where I got the one I have <laughs> this is from you is from me yeah it's um they're a really fun little gift too so I think they're a great little Christmas present but uh if you like to make them but if like I said if you're making them for small kids I'll show you at the end where you could put some little dots of glue that might help them hold up a little more. I mean, for me, my ornaments, they go on my tree and then a, in a box and then on my tree and in a box. Um, but my <laughs> but my kids have their own Christmas tree. Oh yeah, you could write initials with glitter. Oh, glue totally, totally. I mean, fun stuff like that on them. All Put kinds the of things. year and the... the year. I mean, there there's so many fun ways to personalize it. If you're like it. me, my kids get a different ornament every year. Yeah, my kids get an ornament every year. It's usually from something we did or something they did. Right. But we do something significant about the year. Um, I bought them at Disneyland this year. <coughs> did you? And then when we were in North Carolina, I was like, oh, I need to buy them ornaments. And I was like, I already <coughs> bought them in February. Right. I almost bought just a second set of ornaments for my kids this year. Well, if you quit going on vacation. I know. My life is hard. Right. It feels Actually, so bad for it you. It kind of is hard. I had to go buy a refrigerator yesterday. And I had to go buy a new water heater right before we left for our vacation. So, right now my life is just expensive. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and did you know that appliances are, like, back-ordered all over the country? Like, it's next to impossible to get an appliance right now? Really? Yeah. I wonder why that is. I don't know, but uh, I was like, uh, but what if my fridge is literally dying and I have I to have one? I wonder if it's because factories I think factories were, closed. were closing and imports and stuff like that. <laughs> but they're like, uh, there's only a few we actually have that we can actually sell you now. <laughs> I'm like, why are you all having appliance sales if they're back ordered for two months? Right, because uh, they, that sale was scheduled a year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, fun fact, not so fun, when you absolutely need one right now. So Liz is finishing up. Ooh, last point, huh? See, they're not so bad. They're not so bad. Okay, so what I like to do now. It's a glowing review. Not is, so bad. Is giving, give it another press. So I'll press on one side and then the other. But you'll notice because it's 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 chubby here. Um, I When I press like that, I'm not getting my tips at all. Okay, so what I'll do is see four of my tips are on the lower end and four are up higher. So I'll come here and press the four that are down on, like laying on the mat right now. And then I'll flip it over and press the other four. Ta-da! Yay! Look, I made one. You made one and it's super cute. All right, give it a press. Now, if you were, so like I said, going to give these to kids, can you have me a thing of the Roxanne's glue? Oh, I love this glue. All right. What I would do is I'd take a little bit of fabric glue 
and just come in here and put it, squeeze in a dot on each spot where we, where we fold it under. I just squeeze in a dot all the way around. It's not a lot, but, um, but that'll help hold it in place in case you're dealing with, uh, you know, if you're giving these to little boys who might decide they're ninja stars, <laughs> it could be good to reinforce a little bit, but they are well, I mean, they stay together really well. Okay, They're come secured. Back. Yep. So you're just going to move the camera. Yeah. <clears throat> there you are. Okay. Now we can see your faces again. Now you can again. see my face. Yay. Look, I made one. You made one. So that's how you make them. Now the next step, uh, sorry, I just grabbed my whole bag of uh, embroidery thread. So pick a color, any color. And what you're going to do is just make a little... <clears throat> string to hang it from. Liz is being way more particular than I am. Whatever. Really the color I wanted was just on the top. I had a hard time getting the folds on the tips to meet evenly. So you know mine aren't a thousand percent perfect. They're um mine are mine are pretty good. Let me give you a hint on that. Here I have another strip. Um when you make that fold let me go back behind and then down. Um, to get it to fold really nicely, the instinct is to make this really tight right here and then try and fold it in half. But the problem is that gets, that doesn't leave room to For make the, the fold. So I will leave a little gap there and then fold it over and I get a much better point you can see with my hand behind it uh, if I do it that way. So I like to leave just a little gap um, to fold when I fold it over because I think I get a better point that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's true. The ones that I tried to get tighter are the ones that are slightly wonkier. So I'm just going to, I'm using two strands. I'm just going to twist it. Oh, there you go make them kind of stick together yeah and then guys this this is all the sewing I'm gonna do I'm gonna poke right through here pull it up and tie a knot and that and that's it we're done so you went through all the layers I went through all the layers embroidery needles are so much skinnier or shorter than mine and now I have an ornament so this is a Scandinavian star um, it's a folded ornament I keep calling it origami because it feels like origami um, the strips we used are three and a quarter inches by 12 inches um, I made this littler guy this morning out of leftover binding so this is two and a half inch strip by like 10 ish inches so really I mean if you wanted to get crazy you could even make like really tiny ones and if I I might because you could probably be fun. will just, I just feel... maybe I want to see how small they can go you would I would I would do it just to find Look, out I made an ornament. anyway so this is Cute. our fun tutorial for today I'll get this video up on YouTube tonight or tomorrow morning and I will try and put together some written instructions with some pictures to go with it and, and yeah. get that up as well. But I hope you have fun with these. I think they're great fun. They're good way to use um, Christmas scraps. Great way to use them. Or even non-Christmas scraps. scraps. I mean, use them with whatever fabric you want. I just went through the shop and picked a few. I mean, I started going through our blender wall, our moderns, just trying to pick some fun ones. I didn't get this one made, but I was going to do one that's all the same fabric. This is that's all a, the same fabric. That's a, a that's glittery a fabric. Just for fun. Because why not? Yep. All right. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with a slightly more intensive project. Yeah. It'll be great. We'll, we'll see you later. Yeah. Thanks.